Hello and welcome back to my channel. I've been dragging my feet on this one, but it's time to diamond dust away the cobwebs and improve my Legend of Dragoon character tier list. I'll put a link to the old one in the description in case you want to watch it and laugh at my poor film quality and editing. Ah, uh, everyone's favorite section, the disclaimers. This video reflects my opinions and my opinions alone. If I place a character in a lower tier, it is not an attack on your favorite character or the developers for this game because all characters in this game are viable and can be used successfully in every single battle in the game. It simply reflects my preference for particular characters based on their relative power and utility and my extremely correct opinions as my opinions are always correct. But please don't ask my boyfriend if that is the case as he will likely disagree. So now that I've dragon busted through to disclaimers, we ask who are the best characters in The Legend of Dragoon? The S tier contains characters that are truly broken. Their overall strength or some unique mechanic is likely to make me want them in the party at all times. Any weaknesses they have are completely outweighed by their overall strength and they are likely to make the game much easier to get through. The characters in the A tier have high strengths and they will excel in every battle. However, they're held back by one to two statistics or there's another character who can do their job better. The B tier is for characters that are adequate but have some clear deficiencies. They are quite viable, but there are clearly better options statistically, and these characters have no special sauce that makes them rise above their weaknesses. The C tier is the lowest tier. In it are those special characters that are very fun to play, but provide little to no party utility and have glaring weaknesses that hinder their ability to participate in battles meaningfully. I have completed full runs of the games with these characters, but the only thing they're truly good at is providing a challenge for an experienced player. Also, there's one more caveat to this list. This list is about making it through the game as smoothly as possible, and it assumes that players are not purchasing the overpowered armors in low hand that make everyone basically invincible. I'm also not going to be considering a battle with Faust the super boss in this tier list, although if you want to see a video that talks about that, please let me know in the comments. And of course, leave a comment if you disagree or have any thoughts about this tier list. Let's start things off with a burst, a final burst, if you will. Dart is a generalist. He uses fire magic, and there are lots of blue enemies in the game, but he's middle of the road in every single stat. And that includes speed, which is arguably the most important stat. He has a great final weapon, the Soul Eater, but it damages you over time, so you have to use the Therapy Ring to mitigate that damage or heal more often, which means that you can't patch up your speed with speed boosting items. He also has a great final addition with a high power level that can't be countered by enemies. Final Burst is great, but other characters have better magic. He's also great in the final battle because of a story-related change to his abilities, but that's only one battle. And in all honesty, the reason that he overcomes his mediocrity so well and can contribute so much to the party is that he has to be in every battle, which means he always gets experience. That means that he'll consistently be at a higher level than everyone else. Compared to party members who you can switch out and who aren't in the party for the entire game, his stats will naturally be higher. And I don't mean that every stat that he has will be absolutely higher than other characters, I just mean that at a higher level he's going to have relatively higher stats than everybody else. If you're using a party that has all characters that are at the same level, Dart is not going to be as useful as some of the other characters in this game. In fact, he's not going to be as useful as many of the other characters in this game, and therefore I'm going to place him in the B tier. Unfortunately, he can exclusively provide offense for the team, so he has nothing to offset his mediocre stats. Also, keep in mind that I have an individual analysis for Dart that I will link in the description, and I'll do that for every character. Not all of my individual analyses are out yet, but as soon as they are, I'll be sure to link them in the description of this video. But feel free to take a look at those when you're done watching this one. Lavitz is the Green Dragoon. He has excellent physical stats, and he can both dish out a lot of damage with his additions and weapons, and he can take a ton of physical punishment from enemies. Unfortunately, he has terrible magic and magic defense, meaning his spells do almost nothing to enemies, and even worse, he has the second worst speed in the game. Again, speed is the most important stat in the game because it affects how many attacks you get off. A character with twice as much speed is going to have twice as many turns. But Lavitz has a unique mechanic that makes him extremely valuable, and that is his level 2 Dragoon spell, Rose Storm. This spell halves all of the damage to the entire party for three turns. This fixes any survivability issues your team might have. As a result, your team could be much more aggressive and can do much more damage per turn than they would without him in the party. The problem is that after three turns, Rose Storm wears off and Lavitz needs to get another turn to recast it. And I talked a lot more about Rose Storm in my video that analyzes Lavitz specifically, which I will put a link to in the doodly-doo. Feel free to watch that one after you're done watching this one. In any case, Lavitz goes in the eight here. Rose Storm is broken, but his speed really holds him back. 
Shen is next, and she's the White Silver Dragoon. She's probably best known for having the worst physical attacks in the game. She can't use additions, and so even if her weapons were great, she wouldn't be able to do big damage like everybody else. Her physical bulk is also pretty bad. However, she does have the highest magic stat in the game and the second highest speed, which means she can spam magic consumables unlike anyone else. And not only can she do that in human form, but she can also do that in Dragoon form. The problem is that to get to Dragoon form, she has to attack, and attacking is a damage loss. Her final spell, White Silver Dragon, is amazing. It does huge damage, and it fully heals the party, reviving any downed members. That being said, Shanna has terrible bulk, so it's more likely that she'll fall than somebody else. And while her healing is great, there is another party member that we're going to talk about just a little bit later in this video that I think does it better. So because of her terrible physical attacks, balanced with her excellent magic and healing, I'm going to put Shanna in the B tier. Her magic and even her excellent speed are not enough to save her from being a lower tier character. Rose is next. And speaking of Rose, there are more and more benefits coming to this channel. I have just opened up channel memberships. For a mere $5 a month, you can get early access to my videos, a benefit that I'm sure will leave you gaspless. I'll also have monthly polls that you can whip smack to help determine the direction of my channel. So be a madness hero and click the join button. Partner with me in the pursuit of JRPG excellence. If you can't afford that $5 a month, that is okay because likes and shares are extremely helpful. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. Back to Rose. At the beginning of the game, she has amazing stats in comparison to the other characters, but her stat growths fall off later. Physically, she's middle of the road until she gets her best weapon at the very end of the game for the final fight. She also is not incredibly bulky due to a low HP pool, even though her defense and magic defense stats are quite adequate. Her magic attacks, particularly early in the game, are probably her strongest suit. Astral Drain in particular is quite powerful in the early game, and it can provide party-wide heals. Unfortunately, this spell falls off later in the game as physical attacks become the best way of dealing damage to enemies, but she's most held back by her mediocre speed stat. She's right in the middle of the pack, so her speed stat does little to help her. Rose goes in the B tier. If she weren't so valuable in the early game, she'd go in the C tier, but she does have a lot of utility when you're first starting out in the game. On a lighter note, the next character is Hashal. Grandpa is primarily physically based and he has a high attack stat paired with high speed, allowing him to strike quickly and hard. But that's not all that Hashal can do, because as he goes through the game, his magic stat gets better in comparison to other characters. And as the Purple Dragoon, he gets a huge boost to his magic stats. Defensively, because he's the electric element, he has no weaknesses. That makes him a great choice for any battle, no matter what the enemy's element. And his final weapon is really interesting. I'll talk about that a little bit more in my solo analysis video for Hashel. Hashel goes into the S tier. He's amazing on any team and can be both a physical and a magical attacker, although I think he's best at physical attacking. Kongo next. Kongol is the Gold Dragoon, and he is amazing physically. His health, attack, and defense are unmatched by anyone else in the game. The only problem is Kongol's final addition. It has a multiplier of only 300%, while other characters have multipliers from 400 to 600%, of course, except Shanna. But even worse, Kongol's speed stat is a flimsy 30, meaning that he is the slowest character in the game, and he cannot mobilize his strong attack stat to do as much damage as anyone else in the game, except Shanna. And Kongol's magic prowess is in the garbage. His magic attack is low enough that you should never be using his magic attacks in Dragoon form, and his magic defense is so bad that even with his high HP, he will die very quickly if hit by a magic spell. I'm in danger! All he can do is physically attack, and he can do it very slowly. I've played through the whole game with Kongol in my party, and I love the challenge that that provides, but we're actually officially changing the C tier to the Kongol tier. Sorry, Kongol. Meru is next, and she's probably the most interesting character in the game. The worst thing about her is clearly her terrible defensive stats. She has the worst HP and defense pool in the game, and her magic defense, while it's better, does not really help her that much because her HP is so low. However, she makes up for all of this with her offensive potential. Physically, she does have a very low attack stat, the lowest in the game, and her weapons also have pretty low attack values. However, her best addition makes up for this with a 600% attack multiplier. Magically, she's the second best magical attacker in the game, whether in 
in human or dragoon form. And her level 3 and 4 spells are incredibly useful. Level 3 hits all opponents for a ton of damage, and level 4 is her blue dragon spell. That one hits one enemy for a ton of damage and is amazing for boss fights. But the best part about her is her speed. She has the highest speed in the game. That means that physically, even though she'll do a little bit less with her physical attacks than everyone else, overall she'll get more attacks to work with than everybody else and will end up doing comparable damage. And that goes double for her dragoon form. But wait! There's more! She also has a party-wide heal that removes status effects. That's her level 2 dragoon spell. Meru can do it all. She trades her defense for absolutely dazzling offense and utility. She's an easy pick for S tier and I think that she's the best character in the game. I cannot wait to show you my guide about her, which will be right up here when it's done. If this video helped you, the next video that you need to watch is my detailed analysis of Lavitz, which is right here. And don't forget to moonstrike that like button if you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much, have fun, bye bye!